Good evening, and welcome to AMTV. And now, to celebrate the milestone of 10,000 subscribers, Adam Martin presents A Brief History. The following programme is rated 12. It is intended for audiences 12 and above. There are some instances of strong language. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome to a very special video from us here at AMTV. We recently hit the milestone of 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, an incredible achievement, and without the support that you guys give to me and the channel, I wouldn't be able to make the shows that you enjoy today. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. To celebrate that achievement, I wanted to present you with a rather special program. It's a brief history of me, Adam Martin. I was born in February of 1996, and despite being British, I wasn't actually born in the UK. I was born all the way over in Singapore, and after spending the first year and a half of my life there, me and my parents moved to Belgium in the middle of 1997. We would stay here for a few more years, and in fact, I actually went to nursery in the capital city of Belgium, Brussels. It was an international nursery, so all kinds of kids attended from various countries around the world. As such, we celebrated many holidays and traditions that you normally wouldn't do in a British nursery. One example being Independence Day, an American holiday that we celebrated with lots of ice cream. And as you can see, I really enjoyed that ice cream. <coughs> Eventually, after three years of happy memories, we left Belgium in the September of 2000. We moved to the UK and one month later, in October, I began school. Now being the new kid starting a month late is never fun, but thankfully most of my classmates took me under their wing, with many of them still being my friends to this day, 20 years on. Anyhow, I'm not going to bore you with all my school days, but one key point in my history to mention would be the first time I ever did some acting. So in true actor fashion, let me set the scene for you. It's Christmas of 2006, and it's been a good year up to that point. Doctor Who enjoyed continued success with its second series. I was definitely a lifelong Whovian by this point. Life was good for a 10 year old like me. But as Christmas was coming, it was announced to us at school that the Year 6 Christmas play would be a very condensed version of the Charles Dickens classic, A Christmas Carol. They said anyone who wanted to be considered for the lead role of Ebenezer Scrooge should raise their hand. And 10 year old Adam, who at this point was fairly confident but still shy in places, raised his hand. What made me want to do it? Honestly, I have no idea. Amazingly, I got the part. Probably because the teachers thought I would quiet down if I got it. So then I began the process of learning it. I had 12 pages of script, which for 10 year old me was the equivalent of trying to learn the Bible. Opening night came and surprisingly, it went really well. Here is a vintage clip from early on in the play. That's me on the left delivering what is clearly an Oscar worthy performance. Happy Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Spare a penny or two for the poor this Christmas Eve. Why? No. Why should I give to the poor? Aren't there any prisons or workhouses for them to go to, I say? Well, there is, but they are beastly dreadful places. No one wants to go there. Spare us a few pennies. No. Go away. Go on. Be off with you. Sing your symphony. <laughs> <laughs> with those few nights of playing Scrooge, that was it. Acting? The bug had bitten me. I was hooked. But strangely enough, I wouldn't act properly again until I got to secondary school. When it came to choosing my GCSE options at 14, I could only choose two subjects. I went with my second love, history, 
and my most obvious first love at this point, drama. GCSE drama was two years of some of the funniest lessons ever, and I played all sorts of parts, including the Wicked Witch of the West and arguably my most promiscuous role ever, dressed up as a cat in tight spandex with furry collars. Trust me, I had a lot more fun than I probably look like I'm having in these pictures. In 2012, I started my A-levels at sixth form, and there I continued with my two passions, history and drama. But around the time I started sixth form, another important event happened. On the 27th of September 2012, I created my YouTube channel, which at that time was known as The Loudmouth 37. My first video, you ask? Well, it was a collection video, filmed on a Samsung Galaxy S2 with the flashlight on and the result looking something like this. Hello everyone on YouTube, this is my Doctor Who shelf and I'm gonna be just be taking you through it part by part, show you what's in it. Now, keep in mind, I didn't have any access to any editing software back in 2012, so I would just film on the Galaxy S2, go up to 10 minutes, as that was the limit at the time, and then just upload directly to YouTube. I know it sounds so basic, and it was. There was no editing, no music added, no effects, no transition slides, just raw footage of what I filmed. And for the first few years of my YouTube channel, that's pretty much the way it stayed. Initially, as I made more videos, I stuck to mainly collection-based content, showing off my Doctor Who DVDs, horror DVDs, Michael Jackson stuff, video game collections, you get the idea. I tried out some singing videos. All around me are familiar faces. Yeah, I can see why they didn't take off. Also, I would sometimes just upload weird like this. <coughs> But overall, my content stuck primarily to collection videos up until May of 2014. That was the same month my final A-level exam started, so that's where the majority of my focus had to be. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until then, there might not be another post before my exams, but wish me luck anyway. Until then, goodbye my friends, goodbye. But just after June, exams were done, and I was free. And did I start uploading again? Well, not exactly. The next upload wouldn't be until December of 2014, so a seven month gap between videos. The video was titled, Back in the Game, implying that I was back to uploading and being in a new location as well, a city that is now very close to my heart, Liverpool. So yeah, just an update, I am back, back in the game, and I will be doing more uh, review videos, so thank you for the subscribers sticking by me, and you'll see stuff from me very soon. Though I'm sure I meant well with that video, the big return wasn't to be just yet. A few uploads happened in December and January, but then once again the channel went quiet. In May of 2015, I uploaded another video, explaining where I'd been, and hopefully what was to come. It's just been hard to find motivation, aside from uh, doing the lessons and doing the course here in Liverpool, just to do a lot of things like making YouTube videos has just been a real struggle. I'm not saying that's because I, I don't find the effort, you know, that I'm giving up or... There's just been so much going on and um, it's, it, it's been, it's just been hard, really, that's all I can uh, say. So yeah, just um, hopefully a lot more coming on the channel, um, thank you for sticking with me and um, yeah, just um, have a good one. Sadly, the same curse as before was to follow and after June of 2015, there would be no further uploads for another nine months. I did mention it in the videos back then, but the main problem was that I was at university at the time. And I know some people might think, Oh, well, you go to university, you have a lecture for an hour, and then you party all day, every day. Well, Lippo was not like that. A lot of drama schools are the same, but particularly in my first year, but all through the three years, every day of the week, I was doing nine to 12 hour days, at Lipper, whether that be rehearsals or classes or working on various projects, we'd often have to go in on the weekends as well to rehearse. And trust me, there wasn't that much partying going on compared to your standard university. So if you think after doing a 9 to 12 hour day, sometimes I'd come back into my student house after a day and the last thing I would want to do would be make YouTube videos. Most times I would come in, eat dinner and then go to bed. It was a very tiring experience but also a very worthwhile experience. I treasure those three years greatly, 
and it did prepare me immensely for work in the acting industry. However, after my third Welcome Back video in March of 2016, things did start to pick up a bit. Content was coming, not very fast, but it was being uploaded, as I carefully balanced uploading with my schedule at Lipper. However, on August the 11th, 2016, I uploaded a video that would change my channel forever. Hello there. I just wanted to give a brief history on our five main television channels here in the UK. So that's BBC One, ITV, BBC Two, Channel Four, and Channel Five. It was my first A Brief History video, looking at the beginnings of the five main terrestrial TV channels here in the UK. And this video marked a drastic change in style for me, being a more documentary-based video, and also marked the first time I completely voiced over a video using a proper application. Though I wish I'd remembered to turn the reverb echo off. The history of TV is something I have always found fascinating to delve into, so why not splurge out the random trivia I gain once in a while? This video did really well, and even today, loads of you guys still watch it and comment on how you enjoyed it, even though by today's standards, it's pretty basic and amateurish. Nevertheless, it spurred me to make more Brief History videos, and I've done so on topics such as Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the original PlayStation, Thunderbirds, and CFAX to name a few. Around this time as well was when I changed my channel name, Gone Was The Loudmouth 37, in his place, was me, Adam Martin. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here. With the boost I got from making a brief history videos, it gave me that motivation to make all sorts of content, and new kinds of content for me at that. As such, October 2016 would prove to be a very important month for me in the channel, as two of my most popular videos were uploaded within that month. One of these two was a look at the Disney Pixar collection of DVDs that I had, which at that time was the complete set. This one was harking back to my early style of videos, where I merely just show the viewer what I have in my collection and talk a bit about each film. But the other video I uploaded that month had a much greater impact. This was the BBC Two iDents video, a compilation looking at every iDent from the 1991 to 2001 era of iDents for the channel. Well, every iDent that had some video footage floating around the web at that time. This was my first iDent based video, and the success of it inspired me to make more iDent compilations trying to be as complete as possible, whilst honouring all of those who had helped preserve these clips in the first place. And so, from around mid to late 2016, there were regular-ish uploads coming to the channel. Maybe not every week, certainly not every day, but there was content coming on a semi-regular basis. 2017, or at least the first half of it, was my final year studying at Lipper, so this was a very experimental time for me in terms of the kind of content that I made. What I'm going to do now is take you through some of the series that debuted during this time, some of which still exist today, and some of which I have sadly said goodbye to. December 20th, 2016. This marked the first episode of A Brief Review. This was a series where I wanted to go through every movie that had won the Best Picture Award at the Oscars and, well, review it. I was collecting these films on DVD at the time, so it seemed like a great idea. Only downside was, I wanted to be all professional and use clips from the actual movies to comment over and play snippets of. As it became increasingly more difficult to make episodes this way, after five of them, I had to abandon the series, with the last episode being uploaded on September 12th, 2017. January 8th, 2017. This marked the first episode of the DVD haul. Granted, when I filmed it, it was intended to be a one-off video, but being that I went through a resurgence in DVD collecting in 2017, I decided to turn it into a full-blown monthly series. So at the end of each month, I would show you guys what I picked up, and how much it cost too. I always enjoy getting these ready each month, and after 2017 ended, I turned it into an individual-based series, starting with episode 14. So instead of one big video at the end of every month, every new instalment would be one review of a DVD I had picked up. This new format would continue on for quite some time, but eventually I did leave it be, as honestly I just wasn't having much fun with it anymore. There were 48 episodes in total, the last of which going out on January 28th, 2019. April 29th, 2017. This marked the first episode of the Doctor Men audio readings. I had picked up the first Doctor book, which I really enjoyed reading, and thought it would be fun doing an audio version of it for YouTube. I eventually would do readings for all the books in the series, 
Most of them just myself, but a few of them featured my partner at the time, Lauren, having a guest appearance and providing some voices herself. The last instalment in this series was around the release time of Doctor 13th, which was posted on December 12th, 2018. September 4th, 2017. This marked the first episode in the Closed Down compilation series. These videos were fairly simple, containing classic clips of the TV channels of yesteryear closing down. Initially, I focused on BBC One closed downs, mainly because there were so many out there, but eventually I would diversify into other channels like BBC Two, Channel Four, and in early 2018, began an ITV marathon, with closed downs from different ITV franchises being uploaded each week. The last instalment of the closed down compilation series was fittingly another video dedicated to BBC One, which was posted on July 10th, 2019. 2017 was also the year I thought I'd try my hand at some rather spicy memes, creating such iconic classics such as When It All Goes Wrong. Your child's called India. Oh, so Brooklyn or London. Your or... child's called India. And my personal favourite. You are a disgusting criminal, aren't you? You slithered like a serpent into the White House and ate my personal snack! <laughs> Do you deny it? Classic memes that should be remembered for the rest of time. But 2017 also marked the debut of one series, one that has managed to stand the test of time for the most part. Hey there guys, it's Adam Martin here, so today I just thought I'd do something a little different. But you know, I thought I'd try my hand at it, see what, see what happens, so I'm gonna label this the, the Sunday Catch-Up, because isn't that so quite and family friendly, and um, I'll earn my two pence of ad revenue. So yeah, this'll just be a bit about the last week really, tell you what's been going on. On August 6th, 2017, I debuted the very first episode of The Sunday Catch-Up and it was quite different to how it is now. For starters, there was no Q&A section, and it was literally just me talking to you about the goings on in my life, info about the channel, and trying to be hilariously funny with more memes, zoom-ins, and vocal edits that in hindsight are just, <laughs> oh so cringe. You're trying to con me. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. The Sunday catch-up went out every week, but very quickly, my initial interest waned with it. Some weeks were a bit more lacklustre than others, so I was basically just chatting to make it more interesting. After episode 6 went out in October of 2017, there would be no more new Sunday catch-up episodes. For the time being, that is. However, six months later, on the 1st of April 2018, hope was restored to the masses. Despite being uploaded on April Fool's Day, this was no joke. The Sunday catch-up was back, and a few weeks later, with episode 10, the Q&A segment of the show appeared for the first time, a feature that would become a staple for all subsequent episodes. Okay, it's Q&A time on the Sunday catch-up, and I actually have questions for you all, so thank you to everyone who commented. Let's go through them one by one. Belturge asks, do you like the new Who Wants To Be A Millionaire trailer? Well, if you want my thoughts on the new trailer, go and check out this video I made reviewing the trailer. That was the worst plug, wasn't it? The Sunday Catch-Up grew to become one of the most popular shows on the entire channel, with every week you guys getting the chance to ask me questions and have that audience interaction. And now, three years later, with over 75 episodes, the Sunday Catch-Up is indeed still going strong, with questions from you lot still coming thick and fast, and I'm always looking at ways to try and evolve the programme. A result of that involvement is the Midweek Catch-Up, a live streaming feature which I've recently started on the channel, providing you guys another chance to interact with me on a live basis. Now, the Sunday Catch-Up was one of two shows that still exist in a big way today here on the channel, and the other, I must say, was quite a surprise hit. It took quite a while for it to gain traction, but it has become one of the most popular series here on the channel. And that, of course, is Millionaire Moments. On October 6th, 2017, 
I decided to upload the full game of Jackie and Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, two celebrity contestants that infamously had a botched million pound question on who wants to be a millionaire. You've just lost no! 468 no. The right answer no. is one out of oh, oh, no. Oh, my God. I am so sorry. Oh. Upon realising that many of the show's iconic games hadn't been uploaded in one full, concise video, I decided to make these myself, starting with the five winners who claimed the top prize in the UK, and then, in early 2018, cover the two winners of the syndicated version of Millionaire in the US. These videos performed moderately then, and for a long time, I considered this series long dead. However, in December of 2019, something rather strange happened. I noticed views on the channel were increasing rapidly. Like, really rapidly. The source? The Kevin Smith game. But why? To this day, I still don't know. My guess is that it was randomly picked up by the YouTube algorithm and placed in many people's recommended, but as of this video, it has nearly 3 million views, easily becoming my most viewed video, and as such, I began producing many more Millionaire Moments episodes, each of which has gone on to great success. So what started as a means to upload full games in one video has gone on to spawn a series that many thousands seem to enjoy with each instalment. So as 2017 came to an end and 2018 rolled in, I started to find a stability in uploading. In January of 2018, I reached my first major personal milestone as the channel achieved 1,000 subscribers. This was a huge achievement and, combined with getting a regular job in February, I was able to organise a proper upload schedule. Sure, it never stayed the same way for long, but for once I was able to get out content on a regular basis to you, the audience. It also marked a turning point for me in YouTube, from realising its potential around the summer of 2016 to finding a new love of content creating at the start of 2018, there were going to be many new series that debuted in 2018 that have now since become synonymous with this channel. But before we get to those, let's take a look at some of the smaller series that also debuted in 2018. March 18th, 2018. This marked the first episode of Three Quick Facts. Nah, nah, wrong thing, wrong thing. Okay. Ah, uh, boom. Big Shack. Ota Asni. Scoop no. Rat no. Usna. Oh, tag the girl them as well. Boom. Two plus two is four. Minus one, that's three quick fact. Despite the quirky intro featuring the main meme of 2017, Big Shack, this show was quite simple. I literally just picked three facts and shared them with you all. The more story they had, the better. This show was fun initially, but I noticed the facts I wanted to present were all around similar subject areas, and it took a little longer to make them than originally anticipated. There were three initial episodes, and the following year, a fourth one was uploaded, this currently being the last one, which dropped on July 8th of 2019. The Walkman from Sony, the one and only. November 21st, 2018. This marked the first episode of my review of Through the Dragon's Eye. Originally a 10-part series that aired on the BBC in 1989, this programme became a cult classic amongst generations of British kids, me included. I began to review and analyse each episode, and between each week I would upload each episode of the show without commentary so viewers could experience it how I did all those years ago. And whilst I had fun making these episodes, they took a lot of time to make, and in a way, I made them at a time when I didn't really have a lot of time, especially considering I took on a Christmas acting job last minute, so many shows had to halt production. I only managed to get through three episodes of Through the Dragon's Eye as a result, with the last review video being uploaded on December 5th, 2018. Will I return to finish this series? Who knows? So those were some of the smaller shows that appeared in 2018, but of course there are three big shows we haven't yet talked about. And these three shows in some form or another still exist today, 
and have become wildly popular with audiences. In no particular order, these are The Now Review, Video Scaries, and The I Don't Review. Now That's What I Call Music is a compilation series that has been on the go since 1983, and as of this video has released 106 numbered instalments, and several spin-offs under the Now brand. I'd been a fan of Now for many years, and in 2018 had started to acquire many of the spin-off albums for the first time. An idea struck, and on April 10th, 2018, the very first episode of the Now Review appeared on the channel. The first album to be reviewed was Now That's What I Call Movies, still a personal favourite of mine. Over the next two years, the Now Review would go from strength to strength, often with a new episode dropping every week. At the time of this retrospective, over 90 episodes of the Now Review, looking at all kinds of albums, have been created. And despite a few location changes, the premise has always remained the same at its heart. In September of 2018, I'd just come back from a summer-long tour. I'd moved into a new house, so to go along with all the new beginnings, it felt time for a new series to make its way onto the channel. And sure enough, on September 12th, 2018, the first episode of this new show appeared. And it was a lot darker, and a lot scarier. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Be very, 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 very afraid. It's showtime. Video Scaries gathered everything I'd learnt about making review videos, mixed with a lot more mature content to analyse. The show was a hit, but after nearly two years there have only been 17 episodes produced. There are a few reasons for this, first being that finding fresh content to upload every week became too much for my schedule at the time, so after 10 initial episodes production of Video Scaries halted until early 2019. Second reason being the numerous copyright issues I encountered with making the show. Always a problem when using clips, but one I was often able to work through. One thing I get asked a lot about is the future of Video Scaries. Well, believe me, I did have plans to bring it back earlier this year. After I'd completed my musical tour of the new show No Horizon, which would have finished around mid-April of 2020, I actually planned to bring Video Scaries back into production. But with the global pandemic taking us all by surprise, despite having more time to make videos, it just didn't feel right to me. At a time in the world when there's a lot of fear going around and a lot of uncertainty, to make a series that could potentially just add more unnecessary fear didn't sit right with me. So all I can say is, Video Scaries will return in the future, but only when the time feels right. But of course, the biggest show to debut in 2018, and indeed still my biggest show in terms of its popularity and following, is of course, The I Don't Review. Hello, and welcome to the IDEM Review. In this new series, we're going to have a good look and chat about the various television IDEMs that we have come to know and love over the years. Early in 2018, I realised the BBC2 Halloween IDEMs, long thought to be lost, had recently been discovered and uploaded to the internet. Excited to see these IDEMs in action for the first time, I decided to make a video about them, and in that video I let them play and then reviewed them. So a logical name for this video was The Ident Review. It proved popular instantly, so I made more episodes, and kept making more episodes, and still make more episodes. At the time of this program, over 80 episodes of The Ident Review have been produced. We've looked at many Idents from many different channels, and even two years after it began, viewer interest in the show is still high, with constant requests and ideas always coming in. I think the aspect of The Ident Review that I'm most proud of is some of the interactions you guys leave me in the comments. Not just the requests, but comments saying that your nostalgia has been reignited or it reminded you of a very special or treasured memory from the past. Those moments are truly special, and to everyone out there who's done that, thank you very much for sharing that moment with me. The I Don't Review may have breaks here and there, but I don't think I'll ever truly close it down. It's one of the most popular shows here on the channel, and you know what? Without the I Don't Review, things just wouldn't feel the same. We've clocked up over 80 episodes so far, 
and I hope you join me for many more episodes in the future. As 2018 closed out, I felt in a very good place with my YouTube career. I had three very successful shows going out on a regular basis every week, and also by Christmas I'd just passed my next milestone of 3,000 subscribers. So as 2019 rolled in, I continued to want to expand and evolve my channel to greater heights. 2019, in hindsight, proved to be a very interesting year, but before we get into that, let's take a look at some of the shows that would debut in that year. January 16th, 2019. This marked the first episode of After These Messages. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet. The mild cigar. By this point, I had decided to make video scaries fortnightly, and I wanted something to fill the gap in the two weeks. So this new show did just that. In After These Messages, I selected a group of adverts, played them, and then analyzed them. These would be bumper videos for sure, with each one being over 20 minutes in length. The reason this series stopped is partly because of the big break I was about to embark on, more on that later. And as of this video, there are four episodes of After These Messages, the last of which was uploaded on February 27th of 2019. For those of you who are fans of After These Messages, don't worry, there's plans to be making new episodes on it soon. But in terms of another show, The Now Review, which was still going strong in 2019, it only seemed like the time was right to start a new series looking at what was once its biggest rival. July 9th, 2019. This marked the first episode of The Hits Review. For those who haven't seen any episodes, Hits was the biggest competitor that Now had in the 1980s and early 1990s. As I own the majority of the vinyl releases, dedicating a series to reviewing these instalments seemed like a good idea. Right from the beginning though, I always could see an end in sight for this series. I knew by the time I reached the last vinyl release, that being the Hits album, or Hits 14 or 15, I would stop. I just don't have the space to hold two CD collections, one is more than enough. So with that, the last episode of the Hits review, concluding the series, would drop on May 28th of 2020. The Hits Review proved to be another popular show for the channel, with many viewers saying that it introduced them to the Hits albums for the very first time. But whereas the Hits Review had a definite conclusion, another popular show would make its debut in 2019, with a mini revival in 2020. July 15th, 2019. This marked the first episode of Overthinking. This was a show that came about by accident. I was going through some old VHS tapes, one of which contained episodes of Brum. I found myself commenting and talking over the whole thing, over analysing this show for children. Thus, the idea for Overthinking was born. Despite proving popular, I initially only produced four episodes in 2019 and two more in 2020. But if it was so popular, why did I stop? YouTube copyright, ladies and gentlemen. Despite commenting through the whole thing, making the videos fall under fair use in many jurisdictions, producing overthinking became more of a chore and a fight with the copyright system, rather than being genuinely fun to make. So even though you enjoy it, I can't confirm for definite whether overthinking will return. 2019 proved to be an eventful year for many reasons. Towards the end of February, I decided to take a break. I had a very busy schedule at the time and I just needed a gap from that YouTube cycle. Sometimes creators get burnt out and that definitely happened to me, but taking a break was certainly the right thing to do, because by the time I came back I felt refreshed and ready to make more content for you audiences, which I did for the rest of the year. 2019 would also be the year I'd produce several one-off videos, but many of these became firm favourites of mine. Examples include my brief history on Jermaine Stewart, my beginner's guide to cassette tapes, the Michael Jackson music timeline, my Nintendo Switch collection, and the retrospective on Eddie Murphy's music career, to name a few. If you haven't seen any of those videos before, I highly recommend you check them out. Some of my favourites on the whole channel, that's for sure. As 2019 drew to a close, I had a tough decision to make. I knew I had a Christmas acting job lined up, that being a place aboard the Polar Express, a wonderful show that brightened up Christmas for so many families throughout December, but it was a very intense job. Shows nearly every day, all day, five shows a day, so my choice was this, 
Either I make an announcement on the channel saying there will be no uploads in December due to a busy acting schedule, or I take the insane option and plan an upload every day of the month, advent calendar style. Fair to say, I went with the insane option. And it paid off. December 2019 marked the first time I uploaded daily for a full month. You had the mix of the old and new, with episodes of The Now Review, Millionaire Moments and The Sunday Catch-Up standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with a new series, The Vinyl Collection, special one-offs as well, such as my classic Yu-Gi-Oh deck, and political memes, because who doesn't love a good dose of political memes around election time? Don't back Boris! What do you want from us? Nothing! We just like whipping! Nevertheless, by the time we reached Christmas Day, somehow, by a miracle, I'd done it. A whole month of daily uploads and hitting another personal milestone, 5,000 subscribers before the end of 2019. It was a great time for me and my growth on YouTube, and it provided me much needed fuel to go into a brand new decade. I have to say, here's to the channel, here's to AMTV, here's to you guys in particular, because without you guys, the channel, AMTV, it wouldn't be what it is now, and I only hope that it continues to grow as we finish off 2019 and head, head first into 2020. One thing that December of 2019 proved to me was this. Given the right circumstances and time, I could maintain a daily upload schedule. But as 2020 started, I had no plans to go to that format just yet. And despite popular shows such as The Now Review and The Ident Review taking a break, Millionaire Moments was going through a resurgence, I was still taking you through the vinyl collection, and the Sunday Catch-Up was still proving popular, and growing in audience numbers, and the question numbers growing too. New year, new decade. And time for some new shows too. January 1st, 2020. This marked the first proper episode of The Vinyl Hall. I had shown off my various vinyl pickups before, and was recently taking you lot through a tour of my whole collection, but I had acquired quite a lot of that collection throughout 2019, particularly in the Christmas period. So I took you guys through what I'd picked up. Pretty simple concept, but one people seem to enjoy. This series is still ongoing, with me making a new instalment every quarter. You can expect the next instalment towards the end of September this year. January 2nd, 2020. This marked the first episode of the Doctor Who Review. With the revived show Series 12 beginning on New Year's Day of 2020, I wanted to try my hand at giving reviews of the newest episodes as they came out week after week. And to my surprise, I managed to keep it up for the 10 installments, with a review coming out each and every week. I do have future plans for this show. I want to try and review more Who episodes, both old and new. So for those of you who are Whovians, watch this space. As I neared my 24th birthday in late February of 2020, I had yet another tough decision to make. I'd been cast as the lead role in a brand new musical, No Horizon, which was set to tour around Yorkshire in March and April of 2020. But with that I knew there would be an intense rehearsal and performance period, meaning uploads would slow dramatically on the channel. Despite knowing this, I tried to see what I could do. I finished off the Doctor Who Series 12 review, and I also made an announcement in the Sunday Catch-Up that videos would be coming a lot slower, and maybe on some weeks, no videos at all. But I started rehearsals for the show, everything was going really well, before we knew it we were in tech week, almost ready to go up on our first night, and then, two days before opening night, the news came. We need people to start working from home where they possibly can. And you should avoid pubs, clubs, theatres, and other such social venues. Throughout our three weeks of rehearsals, we were quietly aware of the global pandemic that was starting to take over the world. When we were called to a halt in mid-March, the UK was experiencing a rapid rise of cases of this new virus. Therefore, it was deemed unsafe for us to continue rehearsing, and also unsafe for audiences to come and see the show in theatres, which was completely the right decision. So for now, the No Horizon journey is at a pause, but rest assured, we will be back, and we will have Nicholas Saunderson's story told one day. As I came back home, preparing for a nationwide lockdown, I had to think I was going to use my time during this unprecedented circumstance. There was only one effective answer. My efforts on YouTube ramped down considerably. And also, soon after the lockdown begun, I debuted a brand new spin-off show for you all to enjoy. April 6th, 2020. This marked the first episode of the Ident Review Extra. 
Around this time, I was planning on bringing back the regular I Don't Review after a three month hiatus. As I was doing this, I noticed a lot of the requests I was getting weren't for sets of sequences, but for individual idents from a variety of channels. Taking this notion and applying it to probably my favourite era of idents, namely the BBC2 91-2001 set, the ident review extra was born. With more time than ever before, and the videos being generally shorter, I committed to getting three episodes of the new show a week out to the audience, a target that I'm still currently delivering today at the time of this programme. With almost 50 episodes in just four months, this series is going strong, proving to be popular, and at this stage shows no immediate signs of slowing down. Well, that roughly brings us up to the present. Now, during the pandemic, I've kept a consistent daily upload schedule, the longest that I've ever done here on this channel. And for the most part, I've loved every single minute of it. I've been able to bring popular shows back to their prime, debut new shows, and also still do one-off videos here or there, such as the Walkman Week series and my Godzilla and Gamera videos. Seriously, if you, if you haven't seen Gamera, you need to watch that video because <laughs> you're missing out. Look at that sh Look at it! It's a, it's a flying turtle thing! But recording this now, in the middle of 2020, it all seems strangely prophetic. Here we are, the pandemic, seems to be getting less and less intense, and things are slowly getting back to normal. But the world going forward still has so much uncertainty. I don't know when I'll next be able to get on a stage and act again. I don't know when I'll next be able to go abroad to travel. I don't even know really if this thing is all over. But I'll tell you what I do know. I know that this channel, Adam Martin, AMTV, however you want to call it, and all of you viewers who tune in day after day, I know that without you lot, I still wouldn't be doing YouTube. Your interactions with the channel over the past few years has given me countless ideas and inspirations and it's been fantastic. Without you lot, I wouldn't have seen the love for a brief history episodes. How that love inspired me to better my first video in the series and when I premiered it, the first time we had a premiere on the channel, you guys loved it. Without you lot, I wouldn't have started live streaming. Sure at the minute it's quite simple, I answer your questions, we have a laugh or a joke, but your feedback has given me so many ideas that I want to try on livestream. So once again, I have you to thank. And most importantly, without you lot, there simply wouldn't be the AMTV that the channel has become today. With all the custom idents, fan art, and support that you show this channel, this brand, this identity, it really humbles and inspires me to no end. And for that, I'm forever thankful to you. Whether you were with me right at the start, in the grainy days of the Loudmouth 37, whether you jumped aboard at the first batch of Brief History videos, or whether you joined because of the popular shows like The Now or I Don't Reviews, whatever your reason, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you all next time for many years to come. I've been Adam Martin, and you've been watching A Brief History.
Well, that does indeed bring us to the end of another broadcast day here on AMTV. And indeed, as this is the end of this video, we will now be going on a break. Do not fear, AMTV will one day return. It should be about a week, it might be two, who knows. But one thing's for certain. For the past eight years, I've been filming, editing, generally creating content for you, the loyal viewers here at AMTV. And it doesn't really matter whether you've been with me since the beginning in 2012, whether you joined on a few years later in 2016, or even if you hopped on the ship this year in 2020. What matters is that you guys watch, enjoy, and continue to support me in the videos that I create here at AMTV. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. A special thank you to our producer level patrons, Chong Zi Wei, Joseph Gurkuman Adams, and Lewis Does Everything Benson. With your support, you help us keep the lights on here at AMTV and help me keep producing quality content. And as you can probably tell, the lights are indeed getting dimmer for us here at AMTV, and eventually, like the old studio days, the lights will be turned off, the power will be down, the content will stop. But let me leave you with this. When I come back, it may not be daily uploads, it may not be the same shows as before, but what will be different is that I'll be making longer, hopefully more in-depth, hopefully more enjoyable, more meatier quality content. Content that you as viewers I hope will enjoy just as much as you have all the shows I've produced here at AMTV over the past eight years. So to that, I say thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next one, this is Adam Martin from AMTV signing off. Good night, and for now, goodbye.